Good day, everyone. Alice here from Safi Financial Network. Today is July 13, 2023. Here is the S&P 500 daily chart. So we had another uptick today. Nicely, um, market just uh, carved out uh, to the higher high. And uh, if you just remember, we were talking about the divergence here for the MACD and the stochastic. Right now, we have small divergence, not a small, actually big divergence between these two pivots. But obviously, between here and here, we don't have any divergence. So this is going to be the case for MACD. This is going to be the case for um, RSI. So that's why um, uh, I should say the divergence here at the top is pretty weak. So uh, we don't have any divergence here between these two, uh, the last pivots. And still, we are having divergence between this one and this one, which makes the divergence case is very weak. So, um, but uh, uh, despite of the divergence, we are just uh, getting into a uh, tricky zone, which is a 5,500. So market just recaptured 5,500 today. This is going to be a very, very big psychological level. And if you remember, we were talking about another level, which is the uh, 55, uh, sorry, 45, uh, 30. So that is coming to the play, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, today, just earnings session for the second quarter, just um kick off with a PepsiCo with uh, uh, with uh, with a Delta. And uh, they just uh, came up very well. Like uh, they beat the expectation for the earning and revenue, which is good. And uh, market, that's what the market likes it. And uh, just to carve out to the other high. Tomorrow we will have financials like BlackRock, uh, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan. Uh, those big boys are coming back to the market with the earnings and uh, it's gonna be just the Dow Jones mover. And also United Health as well. So lots of Dow stocks uh, will have earnings tomorrow. So that's going to be uh, interesting to see how market is going to react. I believe financial can beat the beat the earning expectation. I'm not sure for the United Health, but for for the Dow stocks, uh, I believe it's going to be overall good day, and we should see Dow is performing better. But right now, uh, we are just into this channel. So. A uh, 4,500 recaptured, but 4,530, which is going to be just 30 points above, is going to be 78% Fibonacci River from this top to this low. So we are just getting to this one. And everyone knows if you just participate in my uh, trading class, uh, I always talk about 78%, regardless of the negative um, uh, hidden divergence. If you have it or not, 78% always is going to be a pivotal point. This pivotal point, can be just a corrective move to the downside, another crash, and it could be a crash. So we're just at, uh, giving the level, which is 4530-ish uh, based on the daily close. So that's gonna be kind of a resistance. We should see some kind of like reaction from the market. Again, I, I don't know exactly if it's gonna be just a small correction down the road here for this level when we get there, or it's kind of like a bigger one. As long as we are above this level, which is, marked in my chart and i just want to tell you every day because i just want to everyone remember this 4221 to 4254 as long as we are above this area we are in a bullish momentum any corrective move could be a buying opportunity for the next leg up but if we get close below this level which is 4200 let's say 4200 if we get close below 4200 daily basis, ideal or weekly basis, I should say we are getting into uh, a next uh, lower leg, which is gonna be a bear market and we are going all the way down to here. So this level is gonna be a decisive moment. As long as we are above this, we can go higher, higher. And I just uh, make a, bull a bullish case as well yesterday. So if we just uh, close above 50 or 4,500, especially 4,530, let's say, and we hold above this. So if you're just coming down a corrective move and then coming back up above this level, we are getting into a bullish momentum to new all-time high, and that's gonna be a 4,800. Uh, new all-time high was a 40, uh, 48, uh, 4,814, and possibly we, we can hit the double top here or even just the nominal new all-time high. So uh, again, just uh, keep an eye on those levels and uh, just, uh, don't short the market. Don't go long position if you're not comfortable with it. I'm not taking any long position, especially for those ones that are leader, like land tech stock. But for some some good quality stocks that are hammered already, they're going to be a good position. If you 
interested to see uh, those ones, just make sure to come to my channel. Like it's going to be just 25 Canadian dollar um, monthly investment channel. And we are just uh, giving updates to my to my subscribers. We are uh, over 25%, I believe, uh, for the year, uh, for, for the last year. So just imagine from August, uh, last August, which is 2022 to here, S&P 500, just go about like a 10% probably. But we are just beating the S&P 500 about 22, 23% with the upside. So uh, that, that's a marvelous move for us. Uh, we just double up, we just uh, double up perform the S&P 500 percentage wise. So that, that's how we're doing. Even in the downtrend, we didn't get uh, that ugly whiny portfolio. We just hedge ourselves with uh, different strategies and we just allocate our cash position and buy uh, in the dip. Uh, some good quality love is not in a small pullback, which is about some good quality names here. So that's why we outperform market very, very nicely right now. NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones, all indexes we outperform. And that's, that's the bottom line of our portfolio. All right. So uh, again, so we are not uh, long uh, in S&P 500. We are not short yet. So just because momentum is upward. So why we short the market? We short the market. When we get to some certain level and we get the confirmation, and that short thing is going to be just for hedging our portfolio because I believe uh, later on, use the stock market it could be kind of like into uh, next uh, bear market. If we get to the bear market to the lower low and we can get some good quality stock here, very, very cheap. So we want to just uh, get into the deep when uh, market gives us opportunity. Right now, it doesn't give us opportunity. Even even if this there is a correction, I'm not gonna get into um, aggressively into long position for those leading names. I'm just uh, waiting on the side to see if market is giving me a better chance, a cheaper price for good quality stuff. So that's how we are just uh, doing our stuff. So right now, momentum is upward. Uh, we will give market benefit of doubt and we will see how it goes. Moving on to NASDAQ. So NASDAQ was the leader. I just said uh, yesterday, if uh, we get above this level, it's gonna be a fantastic uh, momentum to the upside. And sure enough, so we got above uh, April, March pivot, and this is a breakup. I remember market had hard time to get above this in this period. And look what happened today. So today is a very, very big development. We need to see a pullback. So any pullback to this level, so let's focus on this here, folks. Um, we can see a pullback just right there to SMA 20, which is a 1,500, 177, 15, uh, 15, uh, 15,000, sorry, 200. That's going to be level for the pullback. If you see a pullback to this area and just a reversal happening, that's going to be a next leg up uh, to the upside. Uh, Timing wise, I'm just looking for uh, kind of like end of the June, July, sorry, which is going to be coming along with Federal Reserve meeting. So uh, we are just getting close to very, very important level. So look at these one. So these two pivots just going up, not a higher high, just a lower high coming down again, back with this guy and then going back up, sharply sell up. So lots of buyers just lost their position, stop hunting here, and then pull back, going down, pull back, going down. So there are lots of sell orders here. So there are lots of people uh, just about stock and NASDAQ here. And after almost a year or 11 months or so, if they have their position, they want to get rid of their position. Even if they don't short the market here, they want to just get rid of their position and say, okay, thank you very much. After 14 months, I just got into break even. I want my money back from the market. I don't want to be in this anymore. And that's why selling pressure just getting accelerated with this stuff. So lots of people just getting hammered here. So I'm just expecting market just to react to this level, which is 15,500 to 16,000. That's going to be the level that we should see for, uh, for NASDAQ. As a, as, a, as a resistance. So we will see how it goes, but I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of like getting close to uh, just to make sure that everyone uh, secure your uh, profit. Even if you have like some stocks uh, that you want to have it, 
take 50% off the table with a profit. Let the other, uh, the rest actually goes with the market. So if it goes down even, you just made a profit and you can buy the dip here with your profit. If you if it goes higher, so it's still you have your 50%. So that's going to be the strategy that you can play out. And uh, I'm, of course, I'm not going to short the market right now, but just give you warning. I just give myself warning. Hey, Ali, don't buy this stuff. Don't get into FOMO. Wait for a corrective move because everyone just got into FOMO in this leg up. But look what happened after that. So that's how we got into the market. And I'm going to just... Uh, Again, play out with my with my experience. When we'll roll over somehow, I don't know, uh, next year, six months, next month, whatever. So when we roll over, we have got lots of good buying opportunities here. So just put your money uh, on your pocket so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, don't get into FOMO again. So that's the bottom line of uh, today's video. All right. So uh, we will see how it goes uh, with the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, obviously, we are just uh, getting into divergence here so nasdaq divergence is very very strong so uh again it could be uh, faded like uh like s p 500 and uh, we will see how it goes but right now in macd rsi stochastic uh, they're all uh good uh they're all in good um shaping uh for the divergence on the top but again this can go higher and higher and rsi can catch up with uh, the previous top and just that failed the divergence as well, like SMP did as well. Moving on to um, UF30, which is Dow Jones. Uh, so Dow just hit the top here, and it's kind of like a forming a consolidation. So Dow Jones needs to have like more consolidation pullback to this area for the next leg higher. Tomorrow, again, we will have banking uh, sector, um, as I named before, uh, earnings. So that's going to impact the Dow Jones a lot. So if they come up with a good earning, Dow can fly, uh, fly to the uh, to the sky. Like it can go, uh, it can go massively to the to the uh, to to thirty eight, sorry, thirty five thousand, thirty five thousand or so. But if the earning comes back, so it can go down to thirty four thousand as like a corrective move. Especially United Health, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. They're going to just impact the Dow Jones a lot. So we'll see how it goes with the market. Um, um, let's go to individual names, starting with uh, yield. Uh, this is the GDX, but we will get to that one in a bit. So this is a bond yield, bond yield coming down. As I said, uh, this is ending diagonal. And uh, look what happened to the bond yield. So Bond yield is coming down sharply. So this is kind of like a release for the market, at least for now, that the Federal Reserve is not going to increase the rate because Fed would be at the good position right now. If bond yield is coming down, Fed would be in a good position. They're not going to increase the rate. So we'll see how it goes, how it can go down more. I believe it's going to go down to 4.20%. So that's going to be the level uh, close by uh, Fed meeting on July 26th. And that is the booster for the TLT. So TLT nicely going back up today. And it's kind of like a sharp move to the upside. I really like the TLT setup. If it goes above 104, it can just accelerate to 108, which is going to be a fantastic for TLT and TLT price. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, TLT is in up, 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 upward move uh, nicely. And we need to get it close again above 104. And that's going to be a good level. Uh, moving on to the gold. Gold just had a positive day. Uh, nothing bad, nothing good. It just uh, getting close to this selling area. Lots of sellers are coming back here just because they said it's going to be a, just a, a pivotal point for the gold. So gold can have uh, a downside move. But again, uh, no one knows. I believe if it consolidates here, so that's going to be a right setup for uh, the next leg up. So I believe still gold can go to at least double top or nominal new all-time high. So we'll see how it goes. But I think gold just uh, formed the bottom here. This is going to be a multi-month bottom for gold, at least uh, to September, October, for the next acceleration move. U.S. crude, so just uh, nicely going up. Crude, uh, the positive day, uh, getting into 200 SMA. So that is going to be a resistance, especially coming down to this supply area. So crude is getting back to the supply area. 
getting back to this trend line. And all in all, when you see uh, these uh, three um, basic factors coming along with a resistance area, so crude needs to have a hiccup. And this can go just a pullback to this broken level and then consolidating for the next leg up. If it goes back down, consolidate. So that is going to be very, very bullish bullish news for crude. Crude, crude can get into 84. So we'll see how it goes. VIX just a smash bottom to the downside, $13. And just they're going up a bit, just the seven cents, forming the bottom. So we will see how it goes. If this is going to be a low, higher low, higher low for the leapfrog pattern, a small leapfrog pattern is forming, but we need to have some uh, kind of like a development for the next upside move to $20, or it's going to be just a small pivot to here. We should see another lower low, then it can go up. I believe this upside move is coming when we are getting close to Fed meeting. So we'll see how it goes. Dixie, just the crash today again, continues uh movement to the downside so dixie just getting below 100 level this level if this level doesn't hold up we can go all the way down to here to this demand area so this demand area is 99 to 97 so this is going to be the important level for crude so i uh, sorry sorry for dixie so this is going to be the bottom to get it back up to 100 to 101 for the goodbye keys to here and then sharp sell off to 95. So that's the pattern that I'm looking for Dixie. I'm not bullishing uh, US dollar for the short term and any pullback to the upside could be a selling opportunity to 94, 95. This is the rectangle that I just put here for a long time. I don't show you just because my chart doesn't uh, doesn't have enough space, but probably if we go lower, we uh, this one is getting visible as well. So I'm just looking for this area. This is very, very important level for, crew, uh, for Dixie and we will see how it goes. Moving on to Microsoft, uh, sorry, Magma uh, Index. So Magma just had another upward move to the upside, so that's nice. And we should see this area as a, like a selling opportunity and kind of like a resistance area for a corrective move to here. And we should see kind of like a downside move. If we get close below this or this, we could go all the way down to here, which I don't expect at least for the short term. So we will see how it goes. Any pullback could be a buying opportunity, I believe. But we are getting into a very, very important resistance here. So we'll see how it goes. Technology stock in a good momentum since October. Look at that. So this is absolute V-shaped recovery, nicely going up. And uh, <clears throat> we will give market benefit of that. Moving on to Apple, 77 cents to the upside. Again, Apple just to form the doji bar. Nothing spectacular. Apple is weak. So when Apple is weak, you should just be careful on that. Amazon at the same time, just going higher, gap up, and uh, nicely forming up uh, a bullish consolidation, getting back to this area. So we'll see how it goes. We will give market an Amazon benefit of doubt. Uh, if it goes above 137, it can go to 150. That's going to be interesting. However, we have got a pivot here, uh, which is going to be 145. That's going to be another level. So we'll see how it goes. Meta, just $4 up. Meta just to form a doji bar. So I'm not sure if this is going to be just take up for the next move up, but this is over a stretch. This is over about anyway, if you want to slice it and dice it, Microsoft $5 up, 1.62%, nothing bad, nothing good, just to still keeping the momentum. The good thing for Microsoft is recapturing the SMA 20, which is a good and bullish development. The bad thing is you're still in this wide range bar uh, uh, engulfing pattern. So if this is going to be here, and 130, I believe 345, that's going to be the end for the Microsoft move, at least for the short time. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, again, shorting the market in this situation is very, very tricky. Lots of people just got trapped and caught because of this movement. So look at that. If you just look at my previous analysis, I said Google is weak. Google is weak. But look what happened today, just last two days. Google substantially going higher. This is an amazing move to higher. And right now we are just getting close. This is absolute bull flag. We just break out to the upside. So we can go to 128. But if you just uh, zoom out a bit, the so Google had a potential move to here. So this bull flag, this corrective move is coming just because of this 
gigantic selling opportunity. So this sell just triggered. And right now, this is a nice flag forming for the next off. So this, if this is gonna be a pull, and this is gonna be your flag, uh, minimum it's gonna be just a half of this pull, the maximum target is gonna be uh, the, uh, the length of the pull. So we can go to 140 to 144 or 142, which is gonna be the top of this pellet. And that's gonna be uh, the end result for Google at the same time. Uh, we'll see Netflix just going up. This is forming a bullish consolidation as well. Tesla, $5 going up as well. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, moving on to semiconductors. They were just uh, rocking today. So semiconductor is pretty close to new all-time high. And this is SMS. This sector, believe me or not, this is going to be the leading of the market uh, for, the next, uh, for the next bull market, if we have a bull market. Uh, again, it's pretty tough to call bull market and bear market. We're just coming up with levels. And as I explained for the S&P 500, I'm not going to repeat that again, but semiconductors are getting to pretty close to new all-time high. Socks, the same pattern, still lagging. And this one is not uh, uh, good as like SMH because of different portfolio, but at the same time, pretty good, decent, solid gain for socks as well. So there's nothing bad with it. TSM just moving up. Still, it has way, 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 way just up from the top. So here it's uh, kind of like a distance from the top here. So just imagine uh, one of the biggest, actually the biggest semiconductor producer in the world is here when SOC is here. So we'll see, or SMH is there. So we'll see how it goes. But this is just getting back to the bullish momentum. Not, uh, not a bad shape at all. So. We'll see how it goes. AMD, just a week. This one is weak as well. So as you see here, uh, we have got top here. So we have got this is coming down and then just the forming a bullish consolidation, as I said yesterday. So this can go higher to 125, 127. And if and if we close about this, then we can just think about the double top. But right now it's not. So we'll see how it goes. Nvidia, just this one, surging up to the upside, new all time high. It's not stoppable at all. So NVIDIA is doing a fantastic job right now. So 459, I'm really, really, really disappointed of myself why I sold my position here. When I just bought lots of NVIDIA stock here, I sold them here and I thought that I'm pretty smart because I'm gonna just buy back here, steal rectangular there. But look what happened to NVIDIA. So again, when you have got good portfolio, uh, so just uh, believe in yourself. So don't sell it. Even if you want to sell it, sell 50%, not the, more, not the all. Texas Instruments, uh, this one just at 77 cents to the upside. Lamb Research, this one just getting back $15 to the top. So still forming a bullish consolidation. The good thing for Lamb Research is SMA 20. We captured. The bad thing is still we have got lots of room for this one. If it goes below 600, again, as I said, it can go all the way down to here. But Key level is going to be a 600 level pivot. So we'll see how it goes. Moving on to banking sector, XLF, 12 cents for XLF. Nothing bad, nothing good. Just a consolidating after nice move to the upside. So no one is talking about the banking crisis anymore. So this one is getting back to the shape. And right now it's just uh, going higher. So if it goes above this wide range board, it can go higher to $36. KBE, large cap bank ETF. Nicely forming up reverse head and shoulder. So look at that. So here is the neckline. If we get above this, so we can go to this level. So $40, $42, and $43. So $43, that's going to be the level that I'm looking for. And $42.57. Because these pivots are kind of like a sharp knife. It's broken down to the downside. So right now, we are just the market pointing up. We're pointing for another up upside move. And this XLF. Can, uh, KBE can go to 42.57 down the road. So we'll see how it goes. KR is 74 cents to the upside. This one as well. So nice reverse head and shoulder is forming a neckline. If neckline broke, uh, breaks to the upside, $46. Keep an eye on this because this one can trigger to $50, 53, and 56. I believe. This is gonna happen, especially when earnings are coming for, for the financials. So that can be a mover for the market as well. JP Morgan, so this one just forming up pretty nicely. 
We are already breaking out this level of the breakout happening. This one can move to 160 easily. Uh, not easily, I mean like uh, down the road, we can just uh, get to the 160. Goldman Sachs, this one is lagger, nothing good, nothing bad, just the upside move. Bank of America, this one, I believe this one is in a good shape for the run to the upside. So uh, we just recaptured this pretty nicely. And the next level would be a $31, 32. That's gonna be the, the, the next target as well. So we'll see how it goes, Wells Fargo, 45 cents to the upside. Moving on to gold miners, so GDX, this one is forming up pretty nicely. Um, um, it's kind of like a doji bar because we are just uh, getting at the resistance. I believe this is gonna be the bottom. Nicely recapturing this trend and the formation is getting back to the bullish momentum. 35 to 35.50, that's gonna be the level for the GDX. GDXJ, Nicely going up, the junior miners just are doing better as well. So we are just getting close to this. And look at that. So here's the pivotal point. We just break out to here, goodbye kiss, and then coming down. So we are there. So it's very, very natural and uh, typical that you see a reaction from the market. Even a small dip could be a buying opportunity for the next higher for the big tackle to this trend line. AEM, 28 cents, nothing bad, nothing good, goes back to the supply area. It's a natural reaction, and EM, 26 cents to the upside. Again, this one as well, so kind of like a similar pattern to, uh, to all of them. So Franco Nevada, nice the topping tail here, but this topping tail, it goes to this area. So that's why markets reacted. Gold Barrick, this one as well, so getting to this supply area. So that's why it's, uh, it's very, very normal to see a reaction. Moving on to the last sector for today, energy. So XLE, just the 32 cents. A downside move, it's just consolidating and it's kind of like a natural XOP oil and gas exploration ETF, the same movement, OIH, this one as well. So after a nice move to the upside, we just need to have like a digestive move. And this digestive move could be a, could be just a consolidation, nothing more. Exxon, just a 39 cents, uh, $1.95 cents to the downside. Chevron, $2.30 cents to the downside. Oxy just 12 cents to the upside. Oxy is showing better performance compared to the other uh, big boys. And Rig just the three cents uh, to the upside. Nothing bad, nothing good for Rig, but I think this is going to be a top information at least for the short time. If it goes back here, we will get back more to this one because I'm going to just uh, take uh, accumulate more. Uh, for the next move to um, to twelve dollar probably by end of this year. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I think I covered everything. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and have a good one. See you on the chart. Bye bye.